you go. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So the molecules and materials are collections of ions and electrons, and one needs to solve Schrodinger equation for them. And since there are so many electrons, so many ions, we need to split equations for ions and electrons. And uh, half of the, or about 30% of our time, we were dealing with ions, and the rest of the time we were dealing with electrons. So with the goal of reduce Schrodinger equation for so many electrons to somewhat simpler. And the first heroes who were able to derive such theory were Hartree and Fock, who derived a theory that maps, projects the multi electron problem onto efficient uh, one electron problem, uh, where the electronic electronic electron interaction is taken into account through self-consistent procedure. And uh, you are presenting how to run computational software based on this theory. It's a great success. Now we are in the middle of the chapter that deals with workhorse. Workhorse of computational chemistry, whose name is, uh, the name of this horse is density functional theory. So it is a theory that is not the most precise one, but it pr provides an excellent balance between numerical resources and numerical resources and numerical resources and uh, the um, precision. So we have started to go over this chapter by looking onto some background theorems that uh, introduces the concept of total electron density and tells that many of the tricks that we were doing for these wave functions can be done, done on the language of electron density. So uh, there are two major theorems. One theorem is that uh, everything in a specific molecule can be found based on a, on a density, which sounds strange, but we found it by using mathematical tool for ad absurdum from idiotism. Uh, and uh, the second theorem uh, was that if one does have absolutely correct density, then one will have absolutely minimal energy, total energy of the, of the system. And if the total density is modified a little, then energy will grow. So anyone wants to object in this thing? No. Okay, so from the theorem, it means that if you have some slightly wrong density and slightly higher than needed total energy, then we can launch a search, a self-consistent procedure that will improve density and improve energy until it will converge to ideal optimal value. That's it. Now you know what this functional theory is in principle. And we need to go through the details. So to implement the ideas into equations that a programmer who is like whom we hire would type in and as a code and let us use it. So please digest this idea. And before we go to the actual material, I am going to make some administrative announcements regarding the course. So, um, some of you have already submitted homeworks by emails. From some of you, I am hoping to collect it by walking through the rows. And um, there will be a set of presentations where you share skills that we are accumulating in the labs that you are visiting by your free will. I have updated the list of the subjects and main goal of today's meeting, in addition to theory, is to practice democracy. 
So there is a list of uh, presentation titles that um, please make a couple of choices, like choice one, choice two. And then we will try to make everyone happy or minimize number of unhappy people. So um, you can start looking through it, and I will go through the list um, in more details as, as we go. So the <coughs> course consists of four chapters. We are done with two. We are in the middle of the third. We are going through Contram algorithm. And the presentations that you are practicing democracy and feeling in, so I'm going to get this uh, piece of paper back at the end of our meeting, will result in presentations on November 10th that uh, you will split practical skills on small itemized uh, parts and each individual becomes expert in one of them and uh, shares personal history of successes and failures with others. And uh, it seems to be helpful to get better idea in the practical skills, better than uh, exams or homeworks, although we do not decline those traditional forms. <coughs> So, originally we were planning on November 3rd, but it is too early. Let's plan on November 10th as the, we, we cannot shift it later. 10th for sure. And then in the rest of semester, um, there will be also a little research project component that we need to have like three, four weeks to complete it. Okay, so here is the list that you are Populating right now. So I was trying my best to minimize the list of, of the skills with the VASP software so that we spend as less time as possible and get as much functionality as possible towards research projects. But it cannot be compressed too much. There should be some important components. Um, so I have included whatever is needed to describe optical properties, electrochemi electrochemistry, and reactions. Many important things are skipped, but uh, we need to fit in time. So the uh, red stuff is what we already did in the homework that I'm going to collect and in the previous lab. The blue one is what will be in the coming lab, which will be either in person or through a remote connection. And the green one will be on um, November 2nd. So those are three important components. The black one, as time allows. They are relatively short and we can feed them in, in whatever time remains. So components of um, computational skills for finding total energy, estimating ionization, estimating absorption spectra, looking for desorption energy during reactions, and, and uh, things like this. Um, so please lean back and do not concentrate yet. It's not yet time for uh, peak intellectual uh, concentration. I am going to give a little heads up towards one of the subjects that you will see there, and that is already covered in the, uh, that will be covered in our next lab. Uh, tomorrow. So this piece of software, Vienna Habanisha software package, is designed to bridge chemistry molecules, maybe large biomolecules, and solids, surfaces, substrates in the physical and engineering sense. So one of the features of uh, such models is periodicity. So they are I infinite and periodic. And simplest model that has this feature are one-dimensional polymers. So in the models that uh, we were doing at homeworks, we were missing those. We were doing oligomers with few monomers stick together, but we were not covering infinite chains. It is time to approach it. So we will take one of the oligomers from your homework, measure its size, identify a periodic cell that is repeating, and compute the adjustment, the size of the bond that is needed to make it repeated. 
And then by preparing the simulation cell, we will compute the total density and we'll see the molecule is infinite. So um, one explicitly treats only the one box, but it implies that there are copies of these periodic images and it is infinite to the left and to the right. So one can describe infinite polymers or polymers of lengths approaching infinity. But it is not for this meeting, it is for the lab. And it's just a little heads on what we will be doing in the last month. So, science and computation in general and computational chemistry in particular doesn't have goal to dry brains of young people. It is designed by people for, for the people. And all people who design this uh, series and program codes have their strong and big places. They have uh, biographies and birthdays. So, and sometimes if they perform well, they, got, they get awards for their performance. So uh, this uh, smiling face is 93-year-old uh, Walter Kohn, who got Nobel Prize for actually designing the density function theory that we are considering today. And um, it's just some facts from Wikipedia showing that not everything was um, perfect. Not everyone was uh, accepting him uh, from the beginning. And oh, another thing that I was surprised to learn that his original background is related to math. So it gives us a little understanding why the density functional theory includes formulation of theorems. Okay, and here is the plan of our meeting that I'm going to cover. So we will try to go over either slides or some uh, blackboard scratching. And um, I will announce completion and progress of each statement in, in this plan. <coughs> so <coughs> as we were discussing before, density, so I'm starting with the first item in this plan common on orbital free based function theory. So as we were discussing before, in basic functional theory we are departing from wave functions and Hamiltonian operators. Instead we are using densities and functionals. And if we are purists, if we support the idea of density functional in 100%, then we are not allowed to have wave functions. We are not allowed to have orbitals. And um, such pure people do exist, although it is minority, but there are people who develop so-called orbital-free DFT. And um, it is not us. We are going to be a little more conservative and practical. But there are people who believe that density functional theory is absolute, and they do not accept even a word orbital or wave function. Uh, it's not practical for chemistry. It is good for warm matter, like um, plasma in the center of sun or like nuclear explosions. Um, then it's hard to draw orbitals. Everything is so um, mixed up. And, but in this orbital free um, density functional theory, it is purely as we illustrated in um, Thomas Fermi. There is only density and only energy, nothing else. Only density and only energy. But the main achievement, and I think the Nobel Prize was assigned to Kuhn and uh, his collaborator Popol, who is author of Gaussian software, uh, for, not for the theorems. I don't believe you can get Nobel Prize for theorems. For algorithms. So although those theorems are, I think he designed theorems after, but main thing, he designed an algorithm how to improve total energy 
and total density to an absolute. So an algorithm that allows to converge from whatever we guess to be a density and energy to something that is approaching what is on the nature. So a little reminder if um, some of us were not uh, fully attentive on previous lectures, you can cover it in 20 seconds now. So one, two lectures ago, we considered that as soon as we know distribution, amount of charge density in each point of space, we can reproduce, retract back which ions did create this charge density. So one can solve the back problem. And then from uh, positions of ions and this potential, one can reproduce total wave function and Hamiltonian. So meaning that if you know density, we know everything. And uh, second theorem is that any density except the true one will have uh, energy higher than the minimal energy. Theorems are proved, but there are not a single word how to find uh, density and how to find energy. So we are going to go through this uh, plan and um, we need to justify, we need to be a little more practical and conservative and still use concept of orbitals, which are very intuitively helpful and they are easy to, to compute and uh, go over. And we will set up a merger of uh, true density functional theory and a little bit of Schrodinger equation. In order to do this, we will need to introduce a couple of new concepts. So uh, so-called concept of uh, functional derivative. And um, we are going to introduce a parallel universe, which is not for the first time in, uh, in our course. We introduced uh, several parallel universes, and one course ago, we introduced a uni uh, some of you were taking physical chemistry. There, one introduces an, a universe that has nothing except one electron. Okay, it's very um, a dream of a theorist. <laughs> then, <laughs> in this course, three meetings ago, we introduced a parallel universe of Thomas and Fermi, who have infinite universe, split it on little cages, filled with silly electrons. Silly because they forget to interact with each other. So, a universe of non-interacting electrons. Now, we are going to introduce another parallel world, which will be indeed much more practical. So, it will be um, a universe that does contains nuclei. So molecules are allowed in this universe. But electrons still forget to interact with each other. So they, uh, there will be many of electrons, but they, feel, they will feel only attraction from nuclei, and they will get, come through each other without noticing, without saying hello. And after we discuss this parallel universe, it will be a key cornerstone to uh, set up an algorithm for success, <laughs> for computing electronic structure of anything based on density functional theorems. So at the end of the meeting, and we have, we definitely will finish in, in one hour as scheduled. I think it is plenty of time. So uh, within one hour, we will set up an idea of a loop with a self-consistent increment. A little improvement of density leads to, through some steps, a little improvement of energy, and then going in cycle-wise until we have matching of convergent criteria. Why orbitals are good? Because it is very strict procedure how to compute 
kinetic energy out of those. So if, if, you, if you do have orbital and we apply operator of kinetic energy, which just second uh, derivative over position, it immediately converts this orbital into kinetic energy multiplied by energy. So it's uh, multiplied by orbital. So it is well-established procedure that doesn't induce double uh, doubts in anyone. So the plan is to use concepts of orbitals because they allow to compute kinetic energy. For the rest of energies, we will still keep, be loyal to uh, ideals of density function. OK. Now it is time to stop mumbling over boring slides and scratch something on the blackboard. Let me see if the if the system no the recording is not perfect today, but we can deal with, uh, anyway. Another concept that we went through that if we do have, let's say, electron to nuclear, nuclear interaction, so negative attraction, charge of ion, distance from electron to ion. And here, in order to um, complete this expression, we need to multiply it by density of electrons and integrate it, right? Please object if you do not like this uh, expression, if it sounds unnatural. It's simple Coulomb energy. Charge of ion, charge of electron in a given point in space, and Coulomb denominator this minus sign, nature. No one can, okay, one does call it external potential that depends on position of electron. So we call it expectation value of electron to nuclear integration is integral of this external potential times density. No objections. Summation sign is included into, into this uh, external potential. So it includes interaction with all ions. Okay? Mm -hmm. A little truth. So density of electrons in a given point of space multiplied by size of our volume element can be interpreted as increment in this. Maybe a little crazy, but formally correct. And we still keep the V and integral sum. So if we integrate potential now we go from true space to space of possible densities, very multidimensional space. Okay, integration of potential over different densities. Then we get total energy. What if we remove integral and consider infinitesimal change of the total energy of ultranuclear interaction and infinitesimal change of the density. So D rho V equals D V E. 
So your calculus teachers would not object. Okay. And now we do high school algebra. We divide both sides by delta rho. No objections. And since we are doing something crazy, which differs from uh, regular calculus, we are allowed to design crazy symbols. <laughs> and maybe even use some crazy words. So let's use instead of D, this, this fancy delta. So it is, how do we define a regular derivative? Is limit of incremental function in respect to incremental argument. Okay? Something like this. You can write limit of increment of functional. Okay? This is functional. Of functional. In respect to increment of density. And we can, by analog to calculus, is there we have just derivative, and since here we have functional, functional derivative. I fear the subject a lot. It was like I was bouncing back from, from, for several years. But if you do not have comfort, you are happy to. So, we just do increment of function to increment of density, and this will be functional derivative, and it will provide the potential this one. potential of this, which potential electrons interact to nucleus. So it means that for, from some unknown sources, we already know the functional form, which should be and we know how to do functional derivative, we can immediately reproduce potential of electron to nuclear interaction. And we can reproduce positions of all nucleus. Why? Why do, did we spend five minutes on, on this crazy concept? Because it is a bridge from this uh, new concepts to our old favorite simple one electron potentials that can be easily stick into Schrodinger equation. So the benefit it is usable for Schrodinger equation. <coughs> no objections. I deserve a sip of coffee. <coughs> And something similar is scratched here. So increment of functional in respect to increment of derivative gives the potential. So we are done with functional derivative and we are already got the benefits that it does help to use our Strong skills in Schrodinger equation. Okay. <clears throat> so, what are components, what are terms in the total energy? This is something uh, that you're probably tired of because we repeat it any time. So it is... Uh, T and V letters with little abbreviations with, which uh, indicate electrons and nuclei. So total energy is T electron, kinetic energy of electrons, and V E N for electron nuclear attraction, and then electron electron, <coughs> V E E, electron electron interaction, which, as we know from our experience in Hartree Fock theory, can be formulated as direct Coulomb and exchange term. And uh, main approximation of Hartree Fock is that one is missing so called cor correlation energy, which means that uh, if you have two electrons moving around, say, 
nuclei, they feel each other and they try to be on the opposite side, like hide and seek. And um, Hardy Fock orbitals do not know about it. They are silly coming through each other. Um, but all the electron electron terms interactions, they do not depend on where ions are which means, and they do not depend on water kinetic energies. So it means that they are universal. And one can set up this functional once and forever, for any molecule. Um, here just a little comment on um, correlation. So if we do not have correlation, then product of two uh, densities would give density of two independent variables. But this is not always true. One can design uh, some uh, like function, two-dimensional function, which will differ from just product of two components. But sometimes it is important. Okay, where are we now? We are going to speak about parallel universes right now. I'm going to reproduce what you see here, but it, it will be more vivid if, we, if I draw it, if I write this couple of lines from scratch and we speak about them. And uh, Walter Kuhn, who got mathematical background, does have a transition between these two universes. It's transition. So in the two universes, total energy has function of density. It's kinetic plus Interaction to ions plus L to no to interaction. What Walter Paul has, has suggested that if you own It doesn't matter which nodes represent your ownership. You can have them all by one dollar bills, or you can have like five times five times ten and fifty times. Or you can have all of them ten times ten. So how the total sum is accumulated doesn't matter. Specific parameter, parameter which will be smaller than one and equal to zero, and we will multiply the electron electron interaction by this parameter. So, no physics, no chemistry, no biology, just pure math. If lambda equals one, then we get back to true world. But there are theories, and there is understanding that we are not allowed to tweak 
the total energy and the total density. The total sum that we own, we, we do not have the right to change. But the way how it is accumulated, not a problem. So he suggests if we slowly decrease the value of lambda, but we want to keep the same value of total energy, we should slowly increase the amount of electron to nuclear interaction. So if electrons do not interact, maybe to compensate it, there are a little more attractive ions that induce stronger energy of interaction. And then we are coming to, to a limit when this parameter lambda is equal to zero. So we still keep, keep the same intensity and the same total energy. But we are accumulating this total energy only as summation of kinetic energy plus electron nuclear interaction with subscript lambda. Subscript lambda means it is not a true, it is not electron nuclear interaction from the real world. It is some electron nuclear interaction from a parallel world, from the auxiliary world. world. So it is a quantum universe where we have no electron electron interaction just because of this mathematical trick. So suppose why don't we assume parallel universe? And I think Shan it was his uh, greatest student who uh, put it in more details after they discussed it. We are almost done. Well, we still need to stay here and go through details, but the main idea is here. So if we can formulate a function of total energy in interaction in this quantum universe where there is no Electron electron interaction. Then we can use all of our power to solve one electron Schrodinger equations. Because Schrodinger equations for true molecules are hard to compute because they do have electron electron interaction. As soon as we remove it, happiness come, comes to us. Energy, we can use all of our skills, use skills to solve Schrodinger equation. So everything prompts that although we believe in density function theory, we have proof of theorems, but we will use our skills to solve Schrodinger equation and get healthy benefits of it. to continue this uh, idea. We we are going to use our skills to compute kinetic energy based on previous experience. It's not a very big deal. We'll, we'll do it. Therefore, for kinetic energy term, we will do something old-fashioned. So we will need functional 
only for the electron to nuclear interaction in Kohn-Sham world. Therefore, we are going to, very soon, we are going to write down, um, electron nuclear interaction as a subtraction of total energy minus kinetic. Right? So it's nothing new, but uh, if you add a little formality, Do we have all components to formulate the algorithm for improving density and energy? Well, we want to be optimistic and we would like to have it ready, but no, we are not, we are not yet. We have almost everything related to energy, but we still do not know how to process the density. So suppose we return back to old-fashioned Schrodinger equation. We find orbitals, whatever, multi-electrons, uh, single electron, but how do we construct density? We have a general idea that um, absolute value squared of the orbital gives density. But are there any specialty? How, how does one change this protocol to compute charge density if you have multi-electron wave function. So in order to have all components, we need the next step. We need to get well-approved algorithm for extracting, for, for writing down exact total density from orbitals or whatever we have. How are we going to do it? So we, we like to explain everything in simple terms, but there are some background concepts where one needs to be precise. And uh, the, those background concepts are anti-symmetry of electrons due to spins, and therefore multi-electron wave function is a Slater determinant that we cannot neglect. So suppose we computed collection of one electron orbitals that we can fill with electrons, but we know for sure that in any atom or molecule, those orbitals are superimposed in form of Slater determinant to form multi-electron wave function. So with respect to this fact, how do we get total density? Can we get something similar to the wave function absolute value squared, or it will be something more complicated. As soon as we answer this question, we, our road will be clear. And I probably need to wipe off both words because ideas will be simple, but it will be a little of calligraphy effort to populate both uh, words. Uh. So here is what we already agreed. If we take functional derivative of the electron nuclear interaction, then we get a potential, right? It is a subtraction of total energy and kinetic.
basically from orbit. So, in a few minutes, we are going to discuss how to practically find orbitals based on the uh, conversion to the constant <coughs> parallel universe. But as soon as we already in this universe, we can find one electron molecular orbital. So since it is a not a true universe, we will call them constant orbitals. And the total wave function is formulated as Slater determinant of the first orbital, second orbital, and many other orbitals. Mm. We're not going to go beyond two, otherwise we will die here. <laughs> <laughs> so, we need density. If the density depends on all positions of popular many electron density, it will be by definition absolute value But if we need total density as a function of only one variable, so the beauty and the goal of all these considerations is to go from many, many um, degrees of freedom, many, many electronic coordinates, only to one. So all the theorems, all our suffering for several uh, weeks is directed towards reformulating very complicated multiple problem on one electron manager. So we need rho depending on, let's say, R1 order, although we have many very tables. So it means that we need to integrate over dr2, dr3, drn, as many Electrons we have. And here we have absolute value square of R1, R2. So we integrate over all but one variable. Good? No violation of basic principles. So we want to merge this definition with definition of slate of determinant. And uh, first, we are going to see how it looks for two electrons, and then we will be able to establish progression. So, how do we formulate Slater determinant? probably should form a matrix right? and run indices of orbitals on one axis, let's say columns, and run um, counting of electrons along the rows. What should I write next? Theta 2 times 2 minus theta 2 R1, theta 1 R2. Correct? Good. So we are going to plug in this expression into here and do integration over R2 because we don't have more variables. And see what happens. This is very simple, a little exhausting on writing, but uh, it will provide very important background for everything we do. So it will establish our own confidence in 
in this um, procedure. So if you are taking notes, then go on and concentrate. If you're not taking notes, then you can go back and wait until the, the whole board will be populated. And now we are opening absolute value square as two brackets. So this wave function conjugate and wave function without conjugation. And I'm going to copy what Levi has supported me in writing. Theta one over one theta two two minus theta two two or one thank you. Theta one no, the same here. Okay. And now we are migrating this star sign from above the bracket to inside inside each of this. So if you are following and taking notes, I am very happy and encouraging you to do so. If you are not, you can entertain yourself by reading books. <laughs> so it's uh, around page 400. Now we are opening bread. So we are looking for density as a function of one positive. Integral g over t. And b are open brackets. So there should be 2 times 2, there should be 4 terms. Theta 1 r 1, theta 2 r 2, star, star, multiply, theta 1 r 1, theta 2 r 2, without star. Now, next one. This one and this one. Theta one and theta two and two start. Theta two and one. Theta one. Theta two. This minus one. So we can, it's too long to complete it at once in the head. Why don't we intellectually focus on each of these four integrals and see what uh, comes out. So if you are looking on the first thing, we are having Theta one star R one, theta one R one, and they are not undergoing the integration, so we can write integral after the R two, right? And then we are writing the rest. Theta two star 
R2, we are very close to an insider. Sigma 2, R2. So if we are practicing legitimate and loyal solutions of Schrodinger equation, if we are getting good orbitals, they must obey orthogonality. Theta i, theta j, integral dr equals 1 if i equals j uh, and 0 if i is not equal j, right? Orthogonality. So here this integral yields 1 because same variable, same index of orbital. If we are looking on the last integral, so what does depend on R2? Theta 1 star and theta 1. See? Right? So integration applied to these two guys will result into 1 due to orthogonality. So theta 2 R1. Theta two R one. This plus signs. You can guess, or you can already know the answer by now that the mid two terms should result in zero. But for confidence, we should double check. So minus integral. Oh, let's write first what does depend only on R1, and then so minus theta 1 R1, theta 2 R1, first term, and then it is multiplied by integral of these two orbitals, theta 2 R2 star, theta 1 R2. Dr2. So, since both functions depend on the same argument, R2, we are allowed to integrate. But since the indices are different, this integral will be equal to zero. So you can, without doubts, cross the whole term. Do you want to practice so you believe that the third one will be also zero? <laughs> Also zero. So, what is our concluding row of R1? Is theta 1 R1 star theta 1 1 plus theta 2 R1 theta 2 R1. So, we, are, we perform summation over all available orbitals, number one and number two. All of them do depend on R1 only, on the same argument. And uh, conjugate times orbital itself, it will be theta one R1 absolute value square plus theta two R1 absolute value square. And now we, we can be brave and tell that if we have like Slater determinant as matrix 100 by 100. We still will have the same progression. Summation of orbitals from one to highest occupied orbital. They're not molecular orbitals, they are Konshan. Fox. And then we write theta i of r1, absolute value square. Row. <coughs> we can forget this index 1 and just uh, row of R. <coughs> this seems very simple, very natural, but now we do have a proof. So it is not our imagination, it's not uh, approximate like Koopman's theory. This is exact way how to compute total density. So if you have orbitals, they allow to construct density. We are good in time, and now we, we are almost ready to relax. We have all components. We have our helpful auxiliary universe. We do have 
Um, and you do have the algorithm how to construct density out of orbitals. What is missing? Nothing. <laughs> Due to first theorem, as soon as we know uh, density and potential, we do know wave functions. So there is a reasonable way to find them, and I'm going to, to show it. But based on theorems, we already have solutions. Uh, if you would be mathematicians, we would stop here. <laughs> but we need practical, practical results. So we are missing just little technical protocol. How to get this theta sub i? And then there will be a protocol. So we start with some trial density. From density, we compute total energy. From total energy, we compute the potential, because we know it, it will be a functional derivative of uh, energy over density. And the potential will be merged together with kinetic energy operator. So not one square. But if you are in atomic units, it will just plus this potential. If you determine an equation to find the orbit, and then from the orbitals, we are going to find the density. And this density is going to fit into the whole procedure once again. Right? So basically, we already have Koncham algorithm. We just need to speak about it a few times more so that we get comfortable with it. And uh, we can argue um, during the questions and answer sessions on the big scientific conferences. When you know sometimes people start toasting each other or putting any of your accomplishments under doubts. So you need to be very confident in, in what you're doing and how to justify it. But we have this step, we have this step, we have this step. We need to speak just a little bit more about how we formulate the Schrodinger equation for one electron orbitals. What are our background, what are our reasons to set it up. And then we have the cycle which goes until we converge to minimal value of total energy. So this was our little exercise of uh, integration. Slater determinants, integration, several terms. First and last stays, middle terms cancel due to orthogonality. So here there is a protocol to compute total density. And uh, huh? I thought I, I will talk more. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, <laughs> surprise for me. Well, we are done. I congratulate you. So we do have, we are not mathematicians, but we are done. <laughs> I think uh, the practical implementations um, maybe when I was preparing, I, I, I thought to postpone it for, for the next meeting. So you have enough food for thought to digest. So I am going to distribute um, pre-recorded instructions for the lab number eight as a link to YouTube video. Uh, I'm going to collect homeworks and your ballots for practice in democracy of what you want to present and when we meet there will be most likely there will be no meeting on, on thursday i may try to uh, set up online just chatting with you through skype giving lecture or find a uh, substitute lecture but please do not uh, mind if uh, there will be no lecture at all on thursday and uh, next tuesday we meet for sure and we go over practical implementations of this algorithm. How we set up 
the instructions for a programmer who will do this algorithm, convert this algorithm um, into code that we all are going to run. Someone wants to cover each of the subjects. So if you haven't completed the density of states calculations in uh, what you submitted here, please do it and send me uh, as an email. I have intentions, from my point of view they are good, to set up another homework due next Tuesday based on the lab. And it will be built on the homework that we have completed now. So if you have a spare minute, please uh, make this density of states. Because now, if you are on the record, I announce completion of the uh, meeting number 20. Thank you for investing your time. And today was most important meeting of the whole course. You, you got the core of the, of the series. Meeting is dismissed. We are going offline. And I will stay here to answer any questions. Are we meeting across the hall tomorrow then? I will send an email announcement. Okay.